Happy Tuesday, folks. Once again, welcome back to WrestleRant, where every single Tuesday I Graham GS and Matthews review all the events that I watch on the WWE Network. Now that all the WWE pay-per-views are out of the way, I've literally watched and reviewed every WWE pay-per-view there is. If you can believe it or not, it's been three and a half years coming, but I finally did it. Every pay-per-view in the books, talked about, reviewed, ranted about here on the show, including all the uh, little mini-specials, Roadblock we did a couple weeks ago, Beast in the East, WWE at MSG, of course, the only exception being any other pay-per-view that has taken place in the past year, including like TLC 2016 and stuff like that, but beyond shows that have taken place in the past year that I wait a year to talk about anyway, we've got all the WWE shows out of the way. So now, before we get to the WCW shows, I'll be reviewing every NXT special that's happened up until about a year ago. So where we'll end up before I talk about the WCW shows, I have no idea. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, though, today we're talking NXT Arrival, which was the first ever NXT Live special on the WWE Network. In fact, the first ever in-ring action show on the WWE Network that aired only three days after, or maybe two days uh, two, I think about two days right after the network's launch on uh, February 27th, 2014. In a great show for anyone who was not familiar with NXT and, you know, of course, the current incarnation, not when it was a fucking competition, you know, uh, train wreck from many years ago. This incarnation of NXT, they were introduced to the all new version of it, uh, the all new awesomeness that was NXT with this show. I know a lot of people who tuned into this show and have not turned back since uh, from three years ago. So let's get started. Your first match in the show, Cesaro versus Sami Zayn. An amazing opener. I don't know what to say about this match other than it was amazing. Um, Prior to this point, if you had seen their 2 out of 3 falls match on NXT from August of 2013, if you had been following the product since that point, you knew how anticipated this match was. You knew that I was excited for it, that you were excited for it. It did not disappoint in being a great opener to the reintroduction of NXT on the network. Uh, these guys just absolutely killing it. I really wish we would see a full fledged feud between them on the main roster. Right now, it's not possible with Sami Zayn being on SmackDown and Cesaro on Raw. Maybe at some point down the road. I always said that the day that Sami Zayn got called up, a feud with Cesaro would be amazing. Like a great way to bring him to the main stage. Of course, that was before Kevin Owens and their whole feud. And that was a great way to bring Sami Zayn to the main roster and revisiting that rivalry from NXT. But nevertheless, I still you know, long for the day we get to see Sami Zayn and Cesaro on the main roster. They've had a few matches on Raw. Um, in the past year or so, but beyond that, never a full-fledged feud, because this feud was great. Sami Zayn battling from underneath, a lot of great, of you know, a lot of great exciting action, which we don't normally see, especially back then in 2014, on the main roster. They worked tremendously well together, a lot of cool spots, and I think one spot saw Sami Zayn go through the ring ropes or go through the turnbuckle, you know that great spot he does, and then Cesaro caught him with an uppercut. Um, That was awesome, and the finish was really well done too. In the end, despite, you know, the history there, Sami Zayn, despite beating Cesaro on his debut night in NXT in May of 2013, he could never again score a victory over Cesaro. You know, two out of three falls match aside where he won like the first fall in like two seconds. But beyond that, he's never, or had never beaten Cesaro in NXT. And he finally lost. I mean, I was going to say he finally won here. He did not. Uh, Cesaro scoring another victory over Sami Zayn, which he kind of had to. I mean, Cesaro was in the Elimination Chamber match right before this, so it would have made no sense for him to beat the WWE Champion clean Randy Orton on SmackDown and then lose to Sami Zayn, a developmental guy in NXT. So he kind of had to win here. But I loved what happened afterwards with Cesaro leaving and then coming back, embracing Sami Zayn, you know, uh, saying good job and blah, 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 sharing some words there that neither guy has said you know, what was exchanged in that verbal exchange that you can't hear, and both guys have kept quiet on it, which is really cool, a moment shared between them two only. So, um, yeah, that was awesome. It was a great endorsement of Sami Zayn planting the seeds for what we thought would become a Cesaro face turn at WrestleMania, which would not come to be because then he would turn back heel anyway and get paired with Paul Heyman. But bottom line, this match was tremendous and a great way to kick off the new era of NXT. After that, we had Mojo Rawley, who was still relatively new to NXT. I think he had debuted in late 2013. He definitely wasn't a prominent figure on the show by this point. Um, He had a non-advertised match against C.J. Parker, winning in three minutes. The guy was a work in progress. He's still a work in progress three years later, but it served its purpose. Got Mojo Rawley on the show, got him some exposure. 
That's really all that it was meant to do. Not be an in-ring classic like the previous match was. It was a good way of bringing down the crowd after that amazing opener. After that, for the NXT Tag Team titles, we had a uh, successful defense of the Tag Team Championships by the Ascension against two mystery opponents that turned out to be not a current team on the NXT roster, or back then anyway. No, it was Too Cool, Scotty Too Hottie, and Grandmaster Sex A coming out of retirement. I mean, they were only on Raw about a month or two before this, on that old school episode of Raw, so they had not been out of the public eye for too long, but like, Too Cool of all people, it's so weird. Uh, Scotty Tuhati did make a random one-off appearance on NXT a few years earlier, and now he's a part of the system again as a coach, which is really cool. But as a big Too Cool fan and that amazing, like, uh, turn it up theme music that they used to have back in the day, I love this. I ate this up. I thought it was great. So uh, the match was nothing special. I mean, uh, the crowd was into, like, the worm and shit, which I don't think he ever ended up hitting Scotty Too Hotty. But the crowd liked it for what it was. Uh, quick match, quick win for the Ascension, putting them over the old established veterans. And the Ascension were never that exciting to watch anyway, so this was probably one of the better matches I've seen from the Ascension in NXT. After that, for the NXT Women's Championship, Paige defending against Emma. A match, I was going to say a match that would seem out of place today, but really Emma's come you know a long way since then. And she was over in NXT. I think people tend to forget that while the gimmick bombed on the main roster because they never really did it properly, the whole bubbly babyface character, it was really over in NXT at first when she was popping bubbles and she was clumsy and you know she was really oblivious and whatever. Um, but it was over in NXT before they just completely cut her legs from underneath her on, on the main roster. So she was really over back then. Paige was a great babyface champion at that point. These two clashing for the first time since Paige had won the NXT Women's Championship, became the inaugural NXT Women's Champion uh, many months earlier against who else but Emma. Uh, they had an awesome match then, an even better match in this show. And you point to certain matches that kicked off the Divas Revolution or the Women's Evolution in NXT and in WWE. This was it. Um, I know people talk about that random ass tag team match that happened on Raw about a year later with you know Paige and Emma, and they lost to the Bella Twins in like under a minute, which I get. But you talk about great women's matches by this point, and like th nowadays we see great women's matches almost every single month. By this point, we weren't really seeing them on a regular basis. They were very far and few between. This one in particular was tremendous. Uh, they really beat the shit out of each other. They really went to great lengths to have a great match. And they did just that. Um, Emma's a tremendous wrestler. She just still, to this day, does not get enough credit. And Paige is great, too. So hopefully we see her back in WWE at some point soon. Um, but yeah, Paige winning with the debut of her all-new submission maneuver, the PTO, the Paige Tapout, the old uh, Bull Nakano move, I believe it was, that made it famous. Uh, but yeah, no, no, great move, great move, great match, really enjoyed this, and really a turning point for the women, not only in NXT, but in WWE on the whole. Another quick filler match here before we got to the main event between Tyler Breeze and Xavier Woods. Match never really got started when all of 30 seconds before Rusev came out and destroyed both guys and vowed to wreak havoc on anyone who stepped in his way and his path of destruction, whatever. Uh, Rusev was not in WWE for too long, or rather NXT for too long, before he got called up to the main roster. It was a pretty early call-up, and he was already, by this point, had already debuted in the Royal Rumble, and vignettes started to air for him on the main roster. He would not debut until the night after WrestleMania, but this was a quick appearance by him, squashing two losers at that point. Xavier Woods was a fucking loser. Tyler Breeze had potential, but he got squashed here by Rusev. Um, and Tyler Breeze would play a much bigger role at the next NXT Live special takeover later on that year in May, which we'll talk about next week. But uh, now this was fine for what it was. And then the main event, a ladder match for the NXT Championship. Adrian Neville against Bo Dallas, the defending champion. By that point, Neville had been holding the championship for about nine months since, be since beating Big E. That's a tongue twister. Beating Big E in May of 2013. And the first ever ladder match, of course, first ever really stipulation match of any sort, other than maybe like no disqualification in two out of three falls, in NXT's history. Uh, Neville was the perfect guy to put in that type of match. Bo Dallas was not like the most amazing wrestler in the world. He never has been. He probably will, never will be. But the guy was an amazing heel. I mean, it's funny to say now, all these years later, that Bo Dallas, of all people, was in a fucking NXT main event. But he was, because he led the charge in NXT for a long time as the cocky-ass heel that acted like a baby face, but everyone hated. He really came into his own in that role, and he was an awesome heel champion. 
Um, he had really good matches over the course of that year with guys like Sami Zayn and people like that and Adrian Neville, like in this match. And they uh, really had a great match here. Neville really shined, of course, being in his own element in a ladder match. And a lot of cool spots. One of the final few spots that saw Neville do the red arrow on top of a ladder that was laying on top of Bo Dallas, I should say, on the ground, laying on top of Bo Dallas. Neville capitalizes from there and scores the NXT Championship. So really the only way, the perfect way to go off the first ever NXT Live Special was by crowning a new NXT Champion in the form of Neville. So overall, very strong show. Um, I mean, the top three matches delivered. The opener, Cesaro and Sami Zayn, Paige and Emma, and then the main event between Adrian Neville and Bo Dallas. Um, th those are the top three matches that mattered. Still goes down to this day as one of the better NXT Live specials. I mean, they've all been great. We have really yet to get a bad NXT TakeOver or a bad NXT Live special. Uh, all of them have either been good, great, or amazing. This one was no exception. So I thoroughly enjoyed this. Definitely check it out for historical reasons alone, not only for pure entertainment purposes. But you look back at this show, I mean, of course, the reintroduction of NXT... But it's funny to look back at where all these people are today. I mean, Sami Zayn doing really well for himself on SmackDown. Cesaro, former Raw Tag Team Champion. Mojo Rawley's on SmackDown. And Andre the Giant Memorial Battle winner. God forbid, but he is. CJ Parker left the company, uh, but went on to great success in Japan recently. The Ascension, I mean, I mean, maybe it's historical for the wrong reasons as well. I mean, look at the Ascension, the longest reigning NXT Tag Team Champions of all time. And they went on to do nothing on the main roster. Too cool, we haven't seen since. Uh, Paige went out to great success in the main roster before kind of fading off. Emma, too. I mean, she's kind of come into her own as a heel recently, but they haven't done much with her on the main roster. Tyler Breeze would go on to do nothing on the main roster. Xavier was not part of the New Day. I mean, Brazongo and the New Day. That's funny. A funny dynamic there. Now they're both part of tag teams on SmackDown. But Adrian Neville, one of the best, uh, definitely the best WWE Cruiserweight champion we've seen in many, many years. And then Bo Dallas doing nothing of note, recently joining up with The Miz on Raw. So, again, a very historical, interesting, and also, more importantly, entertaining show. So check it out, NXT Arrival, from February 2014, only in the WWE Network. Speaking of which, guys, next week on Tuesday, another all-new Wrestle Rant, this time talking about NXT TakeOver for mere months later, May of 2014. An equally enjoyable and historical show. Check it out next Tuesday, right here on Wrestle Rant. But in the meantime, and in between time, guys, have a great rest of your week. Like the video, drop a comment, share the video, subscribe to the channel. That support is amazingly appreciated. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.